Billy D. Williams returns as Lando Calrissian. Netflix drops 47 stand-up specials. Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Robin Wright, speaks out. And as a Patreon exclusive, let's just call this the LaShawn McCoy developing situation. Hey, I've got a lot to complain about, so let's do this. Hey, how goes it? So, uh, yeah, you're probably wondering, hey, what's Vaughn doing uh, bothering us here in the middle of the week like this, huh? Well, what do we got going on over here? So, my thinking is, in dropping the jog vlog, I may make up t- for it with additional black screen podcasts. That's right, I'm saving your battery life on your phone. Thank me later with that subscribe button or joining up on Patreon where you can listen to the full version, you know, with the the hot topic at the end that uh, YouTube doesn't want anybody talking about, you know, that kind of thing. So... There's a lot of news out in the early part of the week. I figure, hell, there'll probably be some more stupid shit that happens for me to complain about on Saturday. Why not go ahead and give you guys like a midweek episode? In addition to this, I want to let you know that I have shot, recorded, and am editing two new retro review games. Uh, Reviews, yeah, that is going to be uh, coming soon. Tomorrow should be dropping one. Some of you know what the game is. Most of you don't. But it's not a super well-known game. But the next one is a well-known game. Okay, so I'm giving you the guys that. And these are arcade originals, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and get to the real topics here. Billy D. Williams, geriatric black guy who first came on the scene, as far as Star Wars fans are concerned, in The Empire Strikes Back, is this guy who, uh, he's, he's a bit of a ladies' man. Oh, well, what do we have here? Right? But we already have a ladies' man, don't we? Mm. Yeah, Han Solo wasn't really a ladies' man, but uh, he, he was a turncoat. But then he, he redeemed himself, Right? So he actually had an arc. You hear that, Disney? You know what an arc is? Because I don't think you do. Well, they're going to bring him back for episode 9 because they're like, look, Han Solo's dead. Luke Skywalker's dead but can appear as a ghost for Rey to look at. So that she can tell him how to be a ghost, apparently. Carrie Fisher, we can do shit with her. But it'd be unscrupulous. Hell, they might just anyways. Who do we got left? Oh yeah, Lando Calrissian. Why, why don't we have you come by? You can be in episode 9. You want you want a bigger part? We can do that. Hell, it'll probably be a small part. Because I saw him on Dancing with the Stars. The guy can barely walk. But what are they really doing? They're bringing someone in to kill them again. That's what Disney does. They say, look, we have to get rid of the legends, right? That's what they did. They went and they called the Extended Universe the Legends. And here they are getting rid of some more of these legends of Star Wars. So that you have to accept and approve of the new guard. We get rid of this black guy. Now you're going to like Finn. That's the train of thought here. Well, now that you can't like that guy, you got to like ours. So, how is Billy D. Williams going to get killed off? I'm thinking here. Could they be as bold as to take out the Millennium Falcon with Billy D. in it? Um, I, I don't know. Because here's the thing. You can put somebody else in the Chewbacca costume. You can put somebody else in C-3PO. You can have an unmanned R2-D2. You have an unmanned BB-8. The Millennium Falcon doesn't have some contract coming up. It doesn't age out. It'll probably stick around. Could he make a bad gamble? Maybe get killed for, for winning a card game? 
Could that be it? That's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to put my money on Lando Calrissian checking out from gambling. Also saw some news come in. This was a couple minutes ago. It says Netflix drops 47 stand-up specials. Montreal's Just for Laughs Comedy Festival is going to have uh, some deal worked out with Netflix where 47 comics from 13 regions, representation, inclusive, will have 30-minute specials put up on Netflix. Folks, as a stand-up comedian, officially, I think it's my duty to weigh in and call bullshit on this. See, here's the problem with the special. In the 90s, it goddamn was special. You had to be a name to get a tape. You had to be a name to get a special on HBO. This stuff is so everywhere now. It's like having your own YouTube channel. Anybody can do it. It doesn't mean it's good. There are so many shite specials on Netflix from people the industry wants to make names that they can't even be bothered to come up with creative poster art for them. Type in stand-up on Netflix. I dare you. Even the names. Look at their shitty thumbnails they go and post for them on Netflix. They just have some kind of bokeh effect. A few little circles off blue color here and there. That's it. Just some photography from the shooting. That's all they've got. Oh, hey, you're on stage. You look like you just told a joke. Hit some bokeh effect in there. And uh, yeah, there we go. Put the, put the Netflix logo at the top and uh, let's go on to the next one. It's obvious the same guy even did all of them, too. There's no heart. Now, for these comedians, this is their their break. You know? This is, okay, I've got my best material. I've skimmed through it. I've got 30 minutes. It's a tight 30. It's going to be good. How can it be judged appropriately, or rather appreciated, when you're on this assembly line where, okay, well, you got your 30-minute window. Okay, it sub you out. Now we got the next. It's like that graduation. What was it in Florida where the black student was dancing a little bit? And they're like, oh, look, they're taking up too much time. We have to, like, handcuff them and, and throw them away. You know, let's get the paddy wagon out. Everybody's got to got to move. You got to move. Gear diploma, walk. That's it. No camera time. Yes, there's some pressure to confine to this weird 30-minute window. At the same time, can anybody sit and watch all of this? 47 30-minute specials from people you've never heard of. This is going to make the consumer into the independent film festival programmer for stand-up. And this is a bad thing. Because you're going to end up with someone who has more of a social media following, whose people slash minions are going to be the ones telling you to check out their special. And those who are truly undiscovered are going to be the ones who get the specials that are ignored. They're going to sit on Netflix and they're going to go unseen just as YouTube videos like this one. That's what's going to happen because there's such a catalog over at Netflix that you actually have to search for specific shit now to find it. You're not going to get recommended some low-level guy's special when somebody like Jerry Seinfeld has a massive deal, Chris Rock has a massive deal. When you get done watching any no-namer special, it's going to say, hey, check out Jerry Seinfeld's. Check out Dave Chappelle. Check out Chris Rock. That's what happens. The names are the ones that get referred through the system. Go to Patreon. Look for Von Fry. Good luck. 
Oh, but you don't even have to look, and you're going to come across Red Letter Media and be told to give them money. It'll just be recommended off to the side. Right there. It's like, hey, look, some of the biggest names we've got, let's make sure that they keep getting money so that they stay on the platform. We don't need them taking their business somewhere else, somewhere that has uh, you know, a sense of dignity and pride and scruples. We don't need that. We need their money. We need them to stay here, so let's make sure that they keep getting more money. It's so much easier than to actually help somebody else out. You know, the whole point was that you're supposed to be like some guy who's not making ends meet over on YouTube, and you go to these other places, right? Suppose these guys have YouTube channels. So what? The YouTube channel thing's not working out, now you got your Netflix special? You were hoping that this catches the eye of the execs at Netflix, the programming, and they're like, hey, you know what? Maybe you'd like a series, right? You're not going to give 47 series. I mean, their series are already largely garbage. They make... Is there not two new Netflix original series? And I'm using the air quotes here when I say original. And I mean every week. Too new every week. And air quotes, because a lot of these are sourced out. It's, hey, okay, it isn't airing in American TV, cable, whatever. It's from Tokyo. Oh, right. There we go. We're calling it every... Okay. This is a cross-production with England, Ireland, what have you. The point is that they're stretched thin. Netflix is on the dawn of collapse... They don't know what they're doing. They're creating too much product, and it's not a strong product. They'd be better off creating less product and make it quality. And this weird comic search thing isn't doing anybody favors. I dare you to sit through all of it. You know why? Because you're going to get to like the third one, and you're going to be like, well, I've had enough of that. Time to watch something with some brand recognition. That's what you're going to do. How do I know this? Because I'm a genius and the best stand-up comedian alive. That's why. You know, I used to think that having a Netflix special would be a big thing as a stand-up comic. Like, I I started out watching the Netflix specials, and there's just have gotten to be so many of them. I don't care to really get a Netflix special. You're better off going to another service, one that presumably won't be dead soon, and have a special over there, like someplace like Amazon Prime Video. Amazon is not going out of business. Netflix is trying to drown you in content to make you think things are all pretty over there. You know, I wouldn't mind having one, a stand-up comedy special that is, on Tubi TV. This is a free streaming service. They have ad supported movies. Maybe they'd put an ad in the middle of the special. I wouldn't really want it to interrupt the flow of the comedy, presuming I don't trip over my own words. But I don't think Tubi TV has their own original specials. So if you had the first or the only original special on Tubi TV. Granted, probably a smaller viewership than Netflix, despite being free. It's just little known service, that's all. If you had the special over there, it actually would be special. Now, I've tried reaching out to Tubi TV. Haven't heard back. But if you guys want to try to help me out, here's something you can do. Go to TubiTV.com. That's T U B I tv.com leave some messages it says submit content they've got a email address tell them hey you should get von fry that's v-a-u-g-h-n space f-r-y you should have him do a stand-up special come on yeah it'll be great he'll do it for almost free it'll be so cheap so let's move on to another topic here Trump has found his Supreme Court nominee, and he named him last night. He said his name is Brett Kavanaugh. He had him, his wife, two daughters. 
come to the podium, and the guy, uh, he spoke a little bit, sounded a little bit like Kermit the Frog. He, he didn't seem like a, a real threatening guy. It sounds like he is uh, a conservative white guy, you know, the embodiment of that, so he's evidently evil. Uh, but he doesn't have, like, a massive history of doing evil shit. The one thing I've seen come up that the the libs got on real quick was saying that he he ruled to deny a... And they called them undocumented, but let's go with the other term. Illegal pregnant teenager from having an abortion. Look how evil this white monster is. We have an illegal alien in our country, pregnant, underage, and she wants an abortion. This evil white man, Christian, does not want her to kill that baby. What an evil asshole. You know, I said the God, I shouldn't have said abortion, because now I'm going to get flagged by YouTube and shit. Point being here, Trump is winning, and he is winning bigger by the damn week. The Trump train is apparently a real thing at this point, and there's no stopping it. Like You can't derail the Trump train. He, something, he'll do something stupid, and then it'll be forgotten about so quick by somebody else messing. You know what? I gotta wonder... If Melania's I don't really care do you jacket was some kind of weird smoke screen to get you distracted from something else. There's like so many weird faux scandals coupled with possible real scandals. Probably unrelated, but the point is that you got you got the fake Russia collusion thing getting in there with the much more likely Stormy Daniel stuff. And you don't know which one to attack him on. Meanwhile, he's making decisions that seem to be helping the economy, at least in the short term. Which, frankly, seems to be the term that matters. The long term, you can adjust, especially if you're doing well now. You can adjust to that. It's much better for you and me to be doing well now than in the future. And in a situation where the future us doing well is out of our hands. Do well now, you can control your future. That's how that works. So we're doing good. Oh, but we have these, uh, what, uh, tariffs coming? Counter tariffs from the EU, from Canada? I'm finding that a lot more people are embarrassed by this Trudeau guy. In Canada, then you are led to believe on social media where he's the darling, where he gets the photo op and, and it makes good optics, and everybody wants to be with Trudeau and all this bullshit, right? But Canadian people reach out to me are like, yeah, uh, a lot of people just think he's an asshat. So we're doing our winning ways. We're putting America first. That's what the voters wanted. Trump is probably going to get the Roe v. Wade overturned because he'll have control over the Supreme Court. This would likely put abortion rights on the role of the states. And that'll be that. Now, you have conservative talking heads like Tommy Lahren who believe that abortion should remain an option to women. And her reasoning is sound in the sense that she's looking at this as a woman's issue. The problem here is, it's not a women's issue. That's where this narrative gets twisted. The rights end where someone else's start. So the rights of the baby are not of the concern of the rights of the mom. Oh, hey, I don't want to have the baby too bad. Maybe you should have thought about not hooking up with this guy. How about that? How come when you try to teach 
uh, idiots things, it, it makes you the bad guy. You're mansplaining. I can't tell women that uh, premarital sex is bad because I'm mansplaining it. And they have the right to be a hoe. And that's empowering. Right? That's how we're doing this. You know, I have an idea to help with the Black Lives Matter stuff. And then all these black people want me crucified for this. So what I said on Twitter was that there could be PSAs showing young people how to behave around cops. Guys get pulled over in a car. They're ready to bolt. They're ready to run. They don't, they don't know what to do. But but the guy driving is like, hey, be cool, man. The cop just says, hey, look, you added a turn light, turn signal out, brake lights out, whatever. No big deal. Just give you a warning. All right, be safe. That's that. Y you know, keep your hands on the wheel where they can see them. Address them politely. Hey, officer. Sup, dog. My nig. <laughs> Don't pull out guns. Don't do suspicious shit. Don't disobey. Don't give them a hard time. Police officers are not rocket scientists. They're low-paid government dudes. You don't need them judging if your life should end or not, do you? So don't put that responsibility on them. Don't make their job any harder. How come educating the victim here makes me the bad guy. You know, someone could say, here's some tips to avoid identity theft. Oh, well, now you're victim shaming. You, These people had no idea their their social security was going to be stolen when they put, put it printed on a t-shirt, ordered that up, and, and wore it around town. They had no idea. Yeah, well, you have no idea your wallet's going to get stolen if you hold it palm out in your hand and walk by a bunch of people in a crowd and don't try to stop them i mean but if you tell somebody not to do this you're the bad guy this is absolutely ridiculous other shit robin wright who is now i guess the lead and the president on uh, the house of cards on netflix which i don't watch because it's some kind of weird sexed up remake of maybe an English show. I don't give a shit. I find it weird though. I thought, wasn't she the first lady? So does this imply it takes place sometime later? I thought she was the first lady. I thought that was the idea. And Kevin Spacey was the president. I mean, this is just what I thought the show was about. So then what she runs after he's out of office and probably killed off if he's not around divorced i i don't know she has to talk uh it was a it was a morning program i believe and she has to distance herself from kevin space you know the publicist this is what they want first established distance she says well i didn't know know him yet yeah, you worked on a show for five years with this guy closely but you didn't know him yeah it's always about trying to pretend that you never you never I never knew he was a monster. There's more allegations of him groping guys. Well, I, he's such a monster. I how could I have known? Don't blame me. I didn't know. I didn't know know him. I mean, no one's blaming you, but is there something against saying that there were warning signs? Oh, because if there was warning signs, how come you didn't tell anybody? I mean, there's a difference between evidence and warning signs i mean yeah the the signs were there but you know what can you do is it really your fault robin if, if you noticed the, some signs but if you saw him doing stuff and didn't report it is that is that why you're distancing yourself here did you maybe see some stuff go down but you didn't say something so now you have to cover yourself up so that you don't get me too'd like collateral me too movement over here right because you're a, a willing conspirator, would that be the case? Allegedly, I mean, I don't, I don't know for sure. I'm just saying, this is a possibility here. All right, so that does it for the free version of the recently canceled podcast. I'm going to quit putting 
numbers on these. I'll just call this the uh, podcast for July 10th, 2018. Now, if you want to hear the rest of it, and this is going to get spicy as all shit. I can't possibly say this on YouTube here, so... Uh, head over to Patreon, support the efforts. Uh, Patreon, what, slash Von Fry. $1 a month gets you full access to the recently canceled podcast. 